Lamont, of course, everyone wants to know about Gigi Jackson. When he did decide to decommit from UNC, what was that conversation between you and him like? Um, you know, I, I spoke with his uh, dad originally, and um, he had told me that this was something uh, that was about to, you know, that they were, had thought about doing. And um, I don't try to put my put the cart before the horse ever, and so I just let it take its run its course, and and the decommitment happened, and then so reached out and just began the recruiting process again. I had been in contact with them, of course, be, before this, before they committed to North Carolina when I first got here, and so we just started the process up again. You know, what was my vision, my plan, uh, what kind of player did I think he could be? What kind of environment was I going to provide here? What were the other guys on our team like and how would they interact with Gigi? Um, they, all the right questions. They asked all the right questions. Their process, they were very thorough in their process. And, um, and again, asked all the right questions because they, they really, they're really committed to, to Gigi and uh, his experience here, more so than just what's the next step, but what his real experience will be here. For someone like him, he could have gone anywhere. What does a player like that do for this program, not just for this season, but for the future of the program? I think from a recruiting standpoint, um, it normalizes the, the, the idea of a player of that caliber coming to this university and playing basketball uh, in our program. So I think that's very important. Kids have always been impressionable, I think now more so than ever. And so uh, I think just the fact that he's here, and, and he's a dynamic personality um, within that uh, arena as well. Really, really talented players. I find, my, I find them watching him in the summertime, and, 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 and they're really talented in their own right, but they're still wondering and concerned about what Gigi Jackson's doing. And so uh, a lot of that is his game, but more of it is, I think, his personality. Very, very captivating young man if you get a chance to spend some time with him but anyway I think it has an impression on on other talented players local players in particular but even on a national level what does he bring to the court that is so game-changing I think at his at his best he's a guy that can impact the game in so many different ways uh, just with his size length athleticism his ability and willingness to pass uh, his ability to shoot he can put the ball on the floor and create. Um, he can play in the mid post. He's good around the basket. He's a good finisher. Um, I think there are so many aspects of the game when you talk about a 17-year-old um, kid, I guess we should say. Uh, you forget that when you see that he's 6'9", uh, 215 pounds. But when you have a person that can do so many different things well, again, at, at his best, I think he's just a guy on the offensive end particularly. He rebounds the ball well that you just kind of give some space and let him create for either himself or for others. Today, the team making the announcement that Ebo is out for the season. How tough was that for you to see and how much of a game changer is that for the upcoming season? Yeah, I mean, one, it's, it's really hard uh, for me. He, he had some, he had some, he had gone uh, back after he was, he, he's a transfer from Coastal Carolina um, and he had gone uh, back to his home homeland of Sweden and had some difficulties getting back over here. So he was so excited to get back here and get to working out with his team and see his teammates. And so to have this happen to him, uh, it really, it was really, it, it hurt my feelings. Just, I felt bad for the, for the kid and my heart went out to him because he's such a great young man. And so, um, but it's gonna affect us on the basketball court too. He's a really talented player. He's been around, he's played a lot of minutes. He's a seasoned guy, uh, very skilled, cerebral player, really good passer. Um, it just, it, it hurts us from a basketball standpoint because he was going to be a really big part of what we were doing on the court. But uh, I anticipate that we'll still be able to take advantage of his leadership, um, even from the sidelines. He's already been in practices in, in, uh, in his boot and he's got things to say on a regular basis whether that's encouraging and cheering his teammates on or if he sees something that one of the other younger players didn't see. I've already had it, seen him having some conversations and pulling guys over. So he's a phenomenal young man. Um, he'll attack this uh, with, his, with positivity as well as anybody I've ever seen have an injury like this. It's a serious injury, but if anybody was going to come back and be in full form, it would be this guy. 
Dawn Staley has been so publicly supportive of you. Obviously, we all know how accomplished she is. What's been her biggest and best piece of advice she's given you since you've been here? Um, well, yeah, I don't know. We've, we've had a lot of conversations, so it's hard to narrow it down to one thing, but we've talked a little bit about uh, how she started and built this program and when she got here, what the, what the status quo was. And, uh, you know, she's getting McDonald's All-Americans on a regular basis, and that was not the case when she got here. So just that process, what it looked like to, to, to get and develop local uh, talent. And so those have been some real things that we, we have spent a lot of time talking about, as well as just, you know, whatever my process is, the things that I know to be tried and true, just to stick to those things. And I thought that was important, really important advice, too. Speaking of the, the local talent here in Columbia, I was looking at the roster before we got here. You guys do have so many guys who are born and raised here in Columbia. What is it about the high school scene here that is so impressive and creates SEC level talent? Yeah, it's hard to say, but there always there's always a lot of talent within the state. Um, and if you look, sometimes it's hidden talent. It's guys that developed, even if you look at a guy like John Morant, right? It, it wasn't that uh, this university just didn't want him to come here and play. I, I think there were a lot of people that looked at him for whatever reason. It, it just didn't work at this level. And then he turns into the player he is. Uh, at the same time, Zion Williamson is, is doing his thing, a, a, another in-state product. And so there's just been a lot of talent around here. And what I've been the, impressed with the most are two different things. The high school coaching is really good. I've, I've seen, we had team camp, and I've seen some of these guys in, in the month of June at these events, and high school coaching is really good. And where I think the strongest point in, in men's basketball is, is uh, I think there's a lot of depth of talent. So while there are the G.G. Jacksons and the Zion Williamsons uh, of the world, then you also have a lot of guys that are the next tier of player, which is a very, very, very important uh, part of, de of developing a winning team.